MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races. Take him um, at his word. 
Well, 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 good morning. Uh, first to remind us that today is November 24, and it's a Friday morning. The, uh, you remember, I think it was in 2020, we uh, had this interview with the uh, GMD of the NNPC, now NNPCL, and uh, that was the time that he, uh, one of the first times we heard that subsidy was taken away, had been taken away completely, that was in 2020. Um, but then, before we knew what was happening, um, we, we began to hear that, uh, and I think, of course, it was because the price of uh, crude in the market, in the global oil market, dropped completely at the time. But before we knew what was happening, of course, it would seem like um, there was some kind of review eventually, and then, you know, whatever happened, happened, and uh, fuel subsidy tended to have remained. Because uh, you'd also remember that it was about after his own uh, pronouncement live on our television station on this platform, on this particular program, that the Minister of State for Petroleum at the time, uh, Jimmy Chris Silva, also said, uh, well, subsidy was gone, but then, you know, some other considerations were being made because of the people. So can we take him at his word? Well, it is his word. And... Um, what we can we can only hope, you know, that this time it is true. I'm looking at a report released last year where the GMD made a commitment assuring Nigerians that the Port Harcourt refinery we're talking about would be completed by March this year. And that was um, how many months ago now? So uh, that is there. Um, but, you know, the, the, for me, the value chain of refining our products in the country, I don't think, I think that is generally lost on us. And many times when we talk about, um, when we talk about petroleum refineries in this country, we only look at just petrol. We look at diesel, we look at jet A1 and those other basics. But there are so many other things that can be made from that. Um, the devices that we use, for instance, and I think we've talked about this quite a number of times, petrochemicals, oils for vehicles and all those things. The, the, the entire value chain is amazing. The job that will be created from those are amazing. Parts for electronics in cars are can be are gotten sometimes, most times actually from, you know, uh, petrochemicals and byproducts of, of uh, the crude oil, furniture in the vehicles, they are right there. So the value chain, the capacity for us to produce in country our own, refine our own oil will greatly, greatly facilitate a lot of other things for us in this country. These facts are not unknown to us at the federal level. Now, when this port happened, and I'm, I'm saying when, Mark, well, because I'm also as hopeful, when these refineries indeed begin to work in the country, the question that I'm also hoping will be answered as the refinery kicks back on, and as you said, the water refinery also, you know, begins to take shape, is how do we ensure that we don't go back to where we are coming from? Sustainability is the key, Markwe, unless we factor in sustainability of whatever initiatives we, we, we start. I don't see us going very far. I remember it was in the Obasanjo days, uh, between uh, 1999 and 2007, I think, that the president at the time went all over Nigeria, all over the world, looking for foreign direct investment in the country. Oh, yeah, he did his own bid, got some people, got some eggheads into his government at the time. Today, how much better have we done since that time? And now the president is doing exactly the same thing, going out all over the world, asking for foreign direct investment into the country. And indeed, some people have started coming. They are, the question that I'm asking, Mark, again is, how do we ensure sustainability of the initiatives at the federal level? And how do we percolate those things down to the states so that we, there, are, there is joint ownership? You remember we had a, 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 an interview with um, the minister of... Uh, in the FCT now, who was governor of River State at the time, and part of the conversation we were having was, what is collaboration with the federal government like in some cases, particularly in the Niger Delta, the NDDC issues? Well, he said, of course, that they, they, the conversation wasn't so smooth. These refineries are cited in states. What's the assurance we have that these things will have the collaboration of the federal government and the states to protect this infrastructure and monitor them so that we don't go back to where we are coming from? That's the question. And 
one that's not just the federal government refineries now. Those other smaller ones that have been that people are talking about modular refineries and the rest of those. How do we ensure that we are sufficient at home with even capacity to export? Limitless questions, if you ask me one way. Limitless questions. Indeed, uh, but I think uh, we can this time around listen to the minister, beg your pardon, to the GMD himself as he spoke to the Speaker of the House of Representatives yesterday. And he did say this time around that you can hold us accountable. That's what he said. Hold us accountable. I don't know whether that was addressed to the generality of Nigerians or that was just to the Speaker. I mean, that's to the House of Representatives holding them accountable. So I suddenly. We should be holding the feet of the National Assembly to the fire if they fail to hold the uh, NMPC GMD to account, if, if, if the goalpost shifts once again. But he did say December is the time, the end of December is the time when they're hoping that this refinery will come on stream. Don't forget that Labour had doubted very strongly, or they had said, well, we're the people on ground. From what we're saying, it doesn't look like this refinery is going to come on stream, but Part of what they had agreed was a joint inspection of the refinery as part of the deals uh, shortly after the uh, the petrol subsidy was taken out. So maybe this time around there's something to this. Will we confirm it from Labour if they too have heard uh, or if they too can confirm that indeed the refinery is on stream uh, to be delivered at the end of December. But certainly this is the NNPC GMD Melikiari But it does appear that that might be taken. The that happened at the House of Reps yesterday between the GMD of the NNPCL and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. In the meantime, we quickly move over to the dailies now. Let us look, take a look at what it is that they're uh, saying this morning. And the Guardian, always focusing on the economy, has this as its headline. High OPEX, harsh environment, hubble, industrial revival, jobs. Okay, so that I would imagine that um, I'm trying to get what OPEX means, but I believe it has something to do with exchange because uh, right there you also see there harsh environment. So high OPEX, harsh environment, hubble, industrial revival jobs. Is there a big story for you on pages four and five? Uh, you have the exchange rate and they put it in bracket there. That's a black market rate. They put it in right there. It's at 1,165 naira to the dollar. Interest rate is as high as 18.75%. And they say between 2015 and 2023, the manufacturing sector lost over 200 players Factory output continues to decline in volume and value. And this is something that should trouble us all in a country where unemployment rate is very high. And a lot of young people, I mean, this is us with a really heavy or a really joining uh, youth population with many more joining the jobs market. So this is a situation uh, we cannot afford. Pages four and five will give you details of that story. Nigeria ranks 144 out of 163 in safest country ranking for 2023. 2023. Is this an improvement or is this a decline? You might want to take a look at page 20. Jega, Babachir, others reflect on INEC 2023 elections amid fresh appeal court verdicts. Indeed, uh, the former INEC chair was speaking at uh, something put together by Yaga Africa yesterday, and uh, he had a lot to say about the register and how we need to do a lot more work in making sure that that register truly has 
the names of genuine voters and genuine voters alone. Talks about his own experience and what happened at the time, why it was difficult for them to merge uh, or to sync all the data that had been collected, not just from INEC, but from other collected bodies. You might want to find details on page six um, of the paper. And uh, look at this. Nigeria loses $10 billion yearly to imported welders. Minister laments. It's on page three of the paper. I guess we can leave it there for The Guardian. That's a sad reality there, Mark. A very sad reality. $10 billion to welders. Oh, wow. Well, something related to what we opened with, Maupe, is on the front page of the Nigerian Observer this morning, and uh, it's a little different from the normal. Skepticism, outrage, greets NNPCL's promise of no fuel queues at Yuletide. Um, skepticism and outrage? Well... I guess we'll find out why all of that. Um, it's on the front page of the Nigerian Observer this morning. The story continues on page three of the paper. About the name blade, Edo Governor Drums states investment potential at Belt Roads Forum in China. And there's a rider only subnational invited to the Global Economic Conference. That's nice. So um, I guess they issues aren't just going to go away. Um, right beside the nameplate, small businesses gasp for breath as rising costs threaten margins. You know, Mark, where I checked out, uh, OPEX is uh, ex essentially talking about the operating expenses of um, businesses, and this is what uh, this story is definitely speaking to. The details of it you'll find on page three of the Nigerian Observer this morning. That's the paper today. Well, taking a look at New Telegraph for you now, and they have this off cycle polls CTA carpets, security agencies, political parties on vote buying, urges INEC to probe infractions. Uh, you might want to know who CTA is. The story is somewhere on page three of the paper. But the off-cycle poll certainly will be, uh, you know, talk of town for quite a while. Uh, hopefully, it will not just be talk. It will be with a view to seeing how we can correct some of the things that went wrong during the off-cycle polls. This obviously still generating uh, reactions from amongst members of the public. Well, take a look at this at the bottom here. Appeal Court reverses Nasara Governor Sakin, says tribunal's judgment in nullity to rule on Ogun Yuba today. CDP governors express mixed feelings over Appeal Court judgments. Imo Yuba will, uh, Imo Yuba CTC, CTC will occupy INEC headquarters today. Excuse me. That's according to Labour Party. Uh, the story is right there on the front page of New Telegraph. Uh, they also have this oil output. Nigeria targets 1.8 million barrels per day ahead of OPEC engagement, so OPEC plus engagement. Do you find that story uh, right somewhere inside the paper? Naira weakens, uh, something that is not very pleasant to read. Naira weakens to 956 Naira 33 cover to the dollar at the official market. Um, and a number of other stories right there. NEC directs governors to revamp a Greek sector, says state FCT owe 1.7 trillion Naira facility loan. So that story is on page two of the paper. Let's leave it there for New Telegraph. Look at this Nigeria newspaper and it is talking about food. Not very nice looking. NBS, Nigerians spend 61.08 trillion naira on food and others in six months. Mark, let's see where your money is going. Household consumptions account for largest share of real GDP at market prices, representing 57.18%. 
68.05 in quarter one and quarter two of 2023. That's already find the details of on page 20 of the paper. Look at the bottom of the page. We've been talking about crude, stolen crude for a while. DHQ recovers over 500,000 liters of stolen crude oil in one week. How about the thieves? The people who stole the crude. Well, maybe you'll find the details of that on page 20 of um, this Nigeria newspaper this morning. Senate targets a $147 billion global bitumen market. Story you'll find on page 5. That's this Nigeria newspaper this morning. He has um, focus, has a focus on uh, the appeal court. Appeal court. NNPP wants justices probe over verdict. Page four is where you'll find details. I, I believe that this has to do with the panel judgment where the NNPP says that that verdict, um, you know, was in your favor, looking at the contradictory statement that was made towards the end of the certified true copy of the judgment given on the electoral matter in Kano State. Uh, page four is where you find details. NNPP wants justices probed over verdict. Challenges judgment on Kano governorship at the Supreme Court. Anxiety as APC NNPP six protests for Saturday. Inua Sule confirmed as Gumbe Nasarawa governors. So big focus on the Court of Appeal. Page four is where you get to find details. Uh, look at this at the bottom here. Terrorism financing. Federal government orders probe of prison officers. Page seven is where you get to see details as well. Economic Council mulls emergency budget for flood disasters. It's right there on page seven as well. And uh, we came to partner Cuba, Mexico on investment in FCT. A story is on page 11 for you. Um, let's leave it there for, well, just before we leave it there. Uh, as we're writing on the back page, quite an interesting piece. Letter to rich Nigerians. Why the poor are mad. you find details. Well, mad in that context also means angry. So <laughs> let somebody <laughs> take it out of context. Letter to rich Nigerians. Is this letter addressed to you? You might <laughs> want to pick up a copy of Leadership Friday and, and let's listen to this on the paper. The Nigerian Tribune this morning is talking about states and the FCT and how much they owe. That's it right there. States, FDT, OFG, 1.7 trillion Naira in budget support facility. Isn't it a little disturbing that we've just been talking about trillions, trillions this morning? There's more uh, of that uh, that we'll be hearing this morning in the course of the program. For instance, 6 trillion Naira tax waivers? Gosh. Anyway, we'll get to that one. Story is on page two. Look at the writer. NEC rejects setting up National Flood Management Council, among other stories. So, the nameplate. Lagos impounds 15 petroleum tankers for parking on Port Access Road. That story is on page 26. So, impounded. And then what? A slap on the wrist? Come get your trucks back? Or the VIS is going to do something? I don't know, I guess we'll wait. Beside that one, you find Kogi freezes state LG accounts. LG accounts again? Okay. One well, more of that you'll find on page 27. Labor Party factions clash in courts over suit against Emo governorship candidate. That story is on page 27, among several others on the front page of the paper today. That's the Nigerian Tribune this morning. I'll take a look at Daily Trust now. They're focusing on the war on Gaza. That's a lit story on the front page. War on Gaza. Israeli Hamas ceasefire begins today. 50 Israeli hostages, 150 Palestinians for release. Israeli forces launch fresh attack ahead of truth. 
Nigeria, seven others reject selective application of international laws. West, Israel not ready for two-state solution, as according to a Palestinian envoy. You find it also on page four of the paper. Uh, but coming back home and looking at a number of uh, stories right here, Nigeria drifting in the health sector, as according to the National Economic Council. Uh, something very troubling yesterday, uh, taking a look at um, uh, signing an agreement with European countries on addressing brain drain in Nigeria. Um, very interesting revelation from the governor of Bolshe State, who says he's built a lot of primary health care centers. He used to have 3,000 doctors, and now he has just about 100 doctors left in the state. Does it speak to where our focus has lain all of the while? The fact that we hardly pay attention to human capital, you know, and, and ensuring that it stays here to work for us. Page four, well, it cannot be an E, it has to be. <laughs> so we're talking human beings here. Page four is where you'll find details. Uh, but take a look at this alleged terrorism financing, federal government order the probe of correctional service officers. They also have that. Cano residents panic as APC set for mass rally tomorrow. And uh, why is this happening? This particular story. Kogi freezes state local government account. Okay. Kogi freezes his own fake account. You might want to read details on page 26 of the paper. Let's leave it there. Trust. To be honest, Mafue, I'm not perturbed or disturbed by the fact that the state um, freezed its own accounts, as I am about the fact that the state freezed the accounts of local government councils. Aren't they supposed to be autonomous by themselves, according to the Constitution? Anyway, Business Day newspaper is next uh, this morning, and you have uh, this story on the front page, another uh, national opening office in Nigeria. Dubai opens Nigeria office in bid to boost trade, says move part of 10-year economic plan. You're wondering why? Well, you get the details. I have an idea, but you get the details on the on the front page, and the story continues on page 29 of the paper. It's essentially about strengthening uh, partnerships. I won't tell you the details. Grab, grab your copy now. And right beside that story, FG unveils security strategies to spur mining investment. Ticket racketeering booms on Apapa e call up delays. Again, I thought we were over that. But hey, that's what you find uh, on the front page of Business Day newspaper this morning. And above, above the name plate, education, tech, internally, internal mobility is seen as key to retaining employees. Find the details of that, the rest of the details of that on page 21 of Business Day newspaper this morning. Well, that's uh, Business Day and a look at some of our papers today. We're back right after now to take on the issues. So stay with us. Media news for all races connecting to the world.
This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting you to the world.